everybody, hope you all are doing well. And today, we are doing a bit of catch up uh, with some of our wanders that we had done overseas, primarily in London and Paris. And the reality is, if you happen to find yourself in that corner of the world, there can be a great opportunity to find some really astounding bourbon unicorns that are basically just impossible to find here in the US. In this wonder, for example, we found the ultra rare Four Roses Limited Edition, a first edition bottle of Yuza, a new Japanese whiskey entrant into the Japanese market, as well as a bottle of one of my favorites, the most Blantons of Blantons, the Blantons straight from the barrel and really a whole bunch more. So today we are talking about our bourbon hunting in London and Paris, what the prices look like on the side of the pond, and what can actually be found. Now, if you like these videos of the wanders, of the hauls, of the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the great stuff we got cooking up for you, <laughs> tons of great stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, because it does really help out the channel and we're super thankful for that. And you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays and sometimes in between. All right, now, let's get down to the video. All right, so today we're going to start this off right with a whiskey check and uh, I'm going to be enjoying another one of the Four Roses family, which is going to be this Four Roses uh, Small Batch Select. And this is really one of my favorite kind of go-to daily drinkers, as you can see. It's it's almost empty. It's almost about time to get a new one. And I really love it because it is good quality. It's not that expensive. And it has that modern bourbon taste, which I really like. And enough ABV to, to get you to go in. So let's get some juice here. See if we can get a pop. Out the bottle, then get myself a little bit of juice. There. And a whiskey, because let's face it, you can never really drink too much of it. You can only just drink it too fast. Cheers. Oh, that's blue. All right, so let's talk about the first whiskey that we're able to find. And so far, our whiskey experience hunting overseas has been, mm, I'd say it's interesting. There are a lot of real advantages to stepping outside of a little range that is the United States, I guess the large range, that is the United States whiskey hunting um, and the pool of hunters is way different out there. It's more equally kind of spread out over the many different types of whiskeys and scotches and bourbons. Whereas here in the US, everyone's looking for bourbon. Bourbon reigns supreme. So that being said, the first whiskey that we got was a bottle of a pretty rare member of the Four Roses family. And I still got it uh, safened <laughs> in its safety packaging from the trip. Let's get this open. Well, that's nice. Ooh, I like that. So first bottle is the Four Roses Limited Edition 2022. Just look at that. Let's just take a moment to look at that. And even in comparison to uh, the, the other bottle, the more basic bottle, still looks real nice. Now, like is all the rage with whiskeys nowadays, especially with the whiskeys that are more, I guess we can call them contemporary. Um, this uh, Four Roses Limited Edition um, has mash bills that kind of start looking more like calculus. I mean, it's composed of whiskeys that are 20, 15, and 14 years old. And there's two of those 14-year-old ones. As well as they have different ages on each of those whiskeys. They have different mash bills with each of those whiskeys as well. Uh, and they're described by Four Roses by an arbitrary code. So there is the OBSV, the OESK recipe, the OESFG, and the OESV. So... And not only are you doing maths, but you're also playing Scrabble trying to figure out what's in the whiskey. Either way, whether the hieroglyphics mean anything or not to you, I can tell you one thing is that out of all the Four Rose collections, I have not yet had one that I have not liked. So it was a pretty easy decision to pick this one up. Now, while we were out and about in London, we did stumble across this one at the very top shelf. And frankly, <laughs> I would have missed it if the wife didn't have a sharp eye for allocated whiskeys and <laughs> good husbands. But uh, yeah, we saw this one for 195 pounds, which as of today calculates out to $234.76 in greenbacks, which is a lot. Undoubtedly, that is a lot of money to pay for a Four Roses, but not as much as you would pay if you had gotten it here in the US at the secondary market, where it runs about $500, or even in comparison to if you win the Four Roses annual lottery, uh, where you could buy it directly from Four Roses, $479.99, but you're not guaranteed to win. So even at that inflated $234.76 um, that we did end up overpaying for it, we overpaid by $54.77 or 
0.33%, which is still not that bad, even with the added insult of having to pay the VAT tax to the crown. Now, the ABV on this Four Roses Limited Edition uh, 2022 is at 54.5%, and I want to be careful not to touch it because uh, I don't have to rub off. Also, it is bottle number 737-4890. Even at the 54.5%, it's not necessarily going to be a heavy heater, but judging by the mash bill, it definitely is going to be complex. <laughs> like the wife trying to explain why everybody hates Meghan and Harry. The tasting notes that I could find on it mention that there's a deep spice flavor, F-L-A-V-O-U-R, uh, overripe raspberries, a strong oak seasoning, vanilla, light sweetness, and a short finish with an overwhelming, <laughs> life-shattering complexity. So overall, the aggregate scores are quite good for the Four Roses Limited Edition at 94.5 points. I mean, that has to be probably one of the best uh, overall whiskey scores that we've seen maybe in the last year or so. And overall, um, obviously this one was a buy for us, um, at least in my mind, to save it and repatriate it back to the US. Because even though the price was higher than the MSRP, it's only 20%, which is kind of a lot, but not as much as it could be. And being able to find it and being able to get my hands on it, Definitely worth bringing back. So uh, the Four Roses Limited Edition definitely was a buy. Next up is a whiskey that I don't think is really well known. Um, it's a relative newcomer even to the Japanese uh, whiskey market. Um, it's the first edition of it. And this is the first edition of the whiskey called Yuza. And uh, again, I got my protective sealant on here. Let's see if we can get this open without oh, damaging the box. And really, this was one that, um, you know, we had taken a bit of a risk on uh, because the people at the liquor boutique in Paris where we got it, um, they had said that it was very good and it's a whiskey to watch. Um, and in the future will probably turn out to be a future classic. And of course, I'm willing to admit uh, thoroughly that we may have been bamboozled as many unsuspecting foreigners are and whiskey lovers are when they come to Europe. So this Yuza Distillery is, is new. It was opened in 2018 in Japan at the foot of Mount Tokai, uh, at least according to the website. Oh, that's a cool looking bottle too. I like that. And the master distiller who's overlooking the operation came out of the Japanese sake market uh, under a company called Kinryo, a corporation that started making sake all the way back in the 1950s. Uh, this Yuza was their first single malt whiskey uh, that is released at the end of 2021, but it really didn't hit anywhere until 2022. And it is matured in uh, American bourbon barrels and is limited to only 8,000 bottles, which, I mean, it kind of sounds like a lot, but, you know, some of the other limited editions, limited editions have runs of 30, 40,000 bottles. Now, this user, it does fit the criteria for Japanese whiskey under the Japanese Spirits and Liquor Makers Association rules. Um, but the whiskey does seem quite young as it's only aged three years and has an ABV that is what we would call, at least here in the mainland, high <laughs> gravity. Definitely. Because it has an ABV at 61%. So that's right, folks. If you were looking for a Japanese whiskey that finally had a little oomph to it, the user has 122 proof. <laughs> now, the price that we got this one in Paris was at 295 euros, which translates uh, into dollars, I think it's like $315.30. Um, and it doesn't look like there's really any of it available publicly on sale uh, here uh, in the United States. So I haven't seen it like at a Total Wine or BevMo or even some of the specialty liquor stores. So I don't really have a price comparison on it. Um, I'm not sure if that's good or bad now that I think about it. Now, the ABV, like I said on it, has a very lovely, a beautiful 61% ABV, uh, which is something that I always like to see. So it definitely has an oversized ABV in comparison to the majority of the Japanese compatriots in the same class. And definitely after a couple drams, you will be ready to take on Mothra <laughs> or uh, the Hydra as well. Uh, the days notes on I could find, at least when I translated them through uh, Google Translate from Japanese to English, mentioned that it has the refined flavor of old hats and hapless belt buckles. Just kidding. It's a, it's a, it's got fruit on the nose, uh, vanilla, apricot, a winter fruit on the palate, as well as a long finish that is chocolatey with citrus and mint. So that all sounds pretty good. And I think possibly could be a real good competitor for the, um, the Ichiro World one that we tried recently. I don't know if you've seen that one, but if you have not seen the review on it, I'll put the link up there for that. But uh, I think it could be a good competitor for the Etro um, World 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 Whiskey Limited Editions. 
So the reviews on the user looked like uh, people liked it. It was at 85 points out of 100. Um, but, you know, all the scores I can find basically lament the fact that the price on it is essentially highway robbery, uh, which, you know, it does feel kind of true thinking about the price versus, you know, the age and the ABV. So overall, I think this was a, a, a buy that was a shot on the dark. I think we may have been sold a bit of a bill of goods and had to buy into the, you know, Japanese whiskey hype. But, you know, there's really going to only be one way to tell, which is to pop this baby open and see what it tastes like. Or we can hold on to it and maybe trade it if it does become a superstar in the near future. So either way, that is the user. And I'm still pretty happy that we got it. And now last and really the least of least is whiskey that really doesn't need much of an introduction, um, which is going to be this Blanton's Straight from the barrel. Arguably, again, the most Blantons of Blantons that you can find. And really, honestly, a great competitor that we found, at least in a tasting that we did, uh, that, that'll come out here in the near future against the Stag Junior, or I guess they're calling it just Stag nowadays. Its stout stature is only surpassed by really its sturdy, <laughs> hefty ABV and delicious Blantonness that uh, on all fronts seems to be kind of sort of maxed out. I mean, it is essentially the Blanton's equivalent of that Subaru WRX that lives down the street that has every little bit of horsepower <laughs> squeezed out of it. And you can hear it when it drives by at four o'clock in the morning every morning. Now the Blanton SFTB, uh, although uh, less now, is uh, still pretty rare to be seen stateside. Um, and for whatever reason, maybe because it is a good competitor to Stag uh, or Stag Junior, um, you know, another one of the great whiskeys out of the Buffalo Tray stable, um, you know, it is much more of a normal feature in the European market. Um, it is most noticeable by its rather unassuming Hi My Name Is style name tag on it and the really unremarkable box. I mean, it looks very similar to kind of a, a lot of the other Blanton's box. You would have a hard time picking it out unless you really knew what you're looking for. But of course, like anything, it is the juice inside that is a whole other matter and what really is important. Now, although there are many Blanton's out there, <laughs> this one is mine. It was dumped on 6-25-2021. It is barrel number 106 from Warehouse H, Rick number 29. Um, and has a proof of 132.4 proof. Here at yet another fine liquor establishment uh, that we found in Paris, we can see that the price on this blend is SFTB is set at 170 euros, which is, is pretty good. I mean, that ultimately comes out to $181.70 uh, USD. But it's really weird because when we asked the attendant uh, to buy it, he looked at it, he looked at the price, and then he grabbed the tag off the wall and said that he couldn't sell it to us at that price because that was the old price and it had not been updated. So of course we're like, okay, well, we'll pay the new price. But he said he didn't know what the new price was and that he couldn't sell it at all, which seems very suspicious. But then again, after some spirited conversation, a couple checks with the manager, and perhaps the realization that Paris had made it through the 20th century, astoundingly still speaking French, in no small part to help from folks like Uncle Sam, uh, he finally relented and let us buy it at the posted price. So pro tip, if you are out and about somewhere in the world and you see a good price, take a picture, because otherwise you may not get it for that price if they take it down and they say no. Either way, this price uh, is still pretty good, especially in comparison to what you can find it here stateside, if you can find it secondhand. Uh, at my local liquor emporium, it was at $270. So, so buying it from Paris, especially at last year's price, we ended up saving $88.30, or 48.6%. Doubly good. Uh, also, there was no sales tax on it, uh, because in mainland Europe, the VAT is refundable to Americans. You're welcome. Now, the ABV on the SFTB is the most noticeable characteristic about it. The ABV on this one specifically uh, is, like I said, at 66.2%, <laughs> which is uh, quite nice, especially over the standard Blandons, which is probably at like 46%-ish. It changes a little bit um, that you get with, you know, the normal single barrel. Tasting notes on it very specifically mentioned that the up ABV is not for everybody. Um, some folks felt that it threw off the Blanton's palate, and it almost seems like a malformity on the overall roundness, especially with the Blanton's, uh, that they felt it kind of threw off the Blanton's palate. So, you know, it's just kind of those things that you either love it or hate it. And also, it doesn't really add any complexity. The high ABV is nice. I like it, um, but it's not going to increase the complexity, and it lacks 
it does honestly lack the traditional balance that you get with Blantons. So the overall scores that I could find on the Blantons SFTB were sort of all over the place that kind of mimic that thought. Um, some were in the low 90s, other were in the mid to low 80s, uh, which really means that uh, it's kind of one of those love it or hate it types of whiskeys. But my two cents is that the muscle up flavors makes it really nice for a sometimes enjoyment. Um, and it did get a score out of 88 out of 100. Uh, and it really is, uh, I mean, it's going to be kind of the difference between like a normal Dodge Charger and a Dodge Hellcat. Sure, it is super cool to have the Hellcat. Do you really want to drive it to work every single day? But for me, as always, especially at last year's price, it was definitely worth a buy and to rescue it and bring it back to the good old U.S. of A. All right, so that's our whiskey wanders from the beautiful cities of London and Paris. And really, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and all the crazy stuff we got cooking up for you, and we got some amazing stuff getting cooked up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help our channel to grow. I like to think it's good for your whiskey mojo and you get notifications when our newest videos come out on Sundays, sometimes in between. So with that, just remember, if you do find a whiskey that you love, really wherever you are in the world, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And in this case, it might even be me. All right, everybody, I'm out. Have a great rest of your week and adios.